Sparky. Voila, as they say. Hello, everybody in Facebook Live Land. We are the Pod Guys Podcast, bringing it to you live as we do every Monday. I am Tony Cass, followed by Kevin Neary here. Of course, we have the uh, the Dunmore Daredevil, the despicable member of Deeds, the uh, the effervescence of the big board. We have Lace Sparky. Oh, he does say hi. He does say hi. Yes. Hi on the big board. Now, of course, we are joined by two gentlemen today. That's right. Count the fingers. One, two. I can count. (laughs) Two. We are joined by Greg, Craig Ahrens and David Espinosa. Uh, They are known uh, for their, not only their acting prowess, but for their writing and directing as well. Of course, you may see their movies on Prime Video right now. Uh, including, I, I, I mean, I have a list of things for you guys. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I know you guys got a lot on your plate. We were supposed to get together, and unfortunately, an unfortunate set of events happened. We could not be there before Halloween. I wanted to push <laughs> your guys' movies, especially for the Halloween circuit. Why don't you enlighten our visitors as far as what you have done, um, of course, on Prime Video. Good, Greg. Well, on Prime Video, all of our films are on Prime. Our, our primary platform, certainly Prime, Tubi TV, we do really well with Tubi TV. Um, and also YouTube. Uh, we're on several YouTube channels. Uh, you can just search the name of any one of our films from Demon Fighter, Evil Down the Street, The Crumbs, and Love and Quarantine and they will pop up um, free with ads. Now, Prime is cool, but you have to subscribe to that. But the others are all very user-friendly and everybody, but worldwide, everybody gets YouTube. So, you know, we, we do really well, um, thankfully, uh, from a worldwide perspective. Tubi is free in the States, Canada, New Zealand, Mexico, and Australia, and it, which is good there. But between those platforms, uh, you know, people can see our films free with ads, so it works really well for indie filmmakers. Now, now, yeah, with, with indie with, rights as well. Yeah, indie, was, indie uh, rights is our distributor. Yeah, indie rights. Thanks, Dave. Now, awesome. it, it's it's great that the um, it's great that with this with the uh, the new way to show movies and new TV shows, it leaves the guesswork out of when the ads are going to be done. You know, has a little counter in the bat in the bottom. You can mute the damn thing. Be done with it. The ads are still going to be playing, whatever. It's so much better than regular cable where you have no idea. You're like a prison. It used to be in the 90s and 80s and all that, you know, even before that. You were a prisoner to the TV commercials until such time, you know. know, So now we're living in this super rare. It's almost like they took the idea from uh, TiVo. Remember the whole TiVo experience? We wanted to get TiVo. Because they didn't want commercials anymore. They would pay that much more extra. So it's almost like we negotiated from TiVo down to where we're at to the point where now everybody's saying, oh, you want the Peacock channel? And I do Amazon Prime because I like free delivery. Not a commercial, by the way, but it just basically sells not itself. A sponsor, you get, not it. a sponsor, but like <laughs> seriously, when you have that much money, you can undercut everybody along the way. It's almost okay. like every small business owner one day they prayed <laughs> for somebody to take out the Walmart. So yeah. then came Amazon. It's easier like, oh. for one person with a billion dollars rather than one person with a hundred dollars <laughs> to undercut the other. Billionaire, right. trillionaire. Now, by the way, people are still starving around the world, but that's you know whatever. Anyways. <laughs> Um, and the commercials are relatively short. Yeah, and they're only 30 yeah. seconds. Exactly, David. Exactly. It's only like 30 seconds, maybe 60 seconds, but they got the counter instead of like nine minutes where you're like, what the? When is when is the show going to come back? By the time you know it, you've already lost track of what the exact plot is. Now, guys, which movie if, would you be most proud of if you could pick a kid like your Sophie's Choice sort of thing? <laughs> of the ones that we made? Yes, yeah. sir. That's a tough question because each one is a individual in itself and has its own qualities. David, this is Sophie's to, choice. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, I, I think I enjoy uh, Demon Fighter. I enjoyed uh, Evil Down the Streets, the first one we did. It was a, a simple 
uh, straightforward uh, film about a family that actually existed and this stuff actually happened. And uh, Love and Quarantine, because Love and Quarantine is about what's going on or what just went on in the lockdown during the pandemic. And uh, the best compliment I got for that, that we heard, was that it was hilariously stupid. I loved that comment. Of course, it's hilariously stupid. Were you, were you going for hilariously stupid? Absolutely, but you, okay. I got to tell you, if you watch the movie, you'll understand why. You'll see why they say stupid. But I got to tell you something. When we're shooting the film, I had several of the crew, including the cast, come up to me and say, uh, is this going to be funny? <laughs> because I don't play the joke. Did they not read the script? Well, exactly. And, and again, as a director, I don't play the joke. I, I play the reality of the situation, sure. which makes it funny because you're like going, how could two people act so stupid? And yet it's believable. That's where comedy exists. Comedy does not exist in the Pratt Falls and in the, uh, the, the stupid smiles and whatnot. No, nah, that, that's fun stuff. The Marx Brothers, the Three Stooges, Abbott and Costello, I love them all. But that's a different form of comedy. You're right. Yeah, no, you're absolutely true. right. I couldn't. I couldn't agree with you more because it involves. I'm guessing just by title alone. I did not watch the movie, but I'm guessing it involves a couple falling or two people falling in love during quarantine. And no, there could be a no. No, what does no, it involve? Let me help it you with it. Okay, yes, just about every rom com or, or type of film like this is yeah. about two people who are trying to get together and overcoming the obstacles and are keeping them apart and finally they get together. Yeah, this is yeah. about a couple that's been married over 20 years, a biracial couple. And so they're already together. And it's how through having to be quarantined together and deal with all the little idiosyncrasies that each of them have and getting on each other's nerve, they grow apart. Dude, this and should be called the Kevin and together. Jen story. <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah, because as, as we know, love comforts all, right? You know, overcomes stupidity, ridiculousness and everything else. Uh, so I, I think uh, when and if, and I'm hoping sooner than later, you see the movie, and you don't have to like it, by the way, just so you know, we don't, we don't trip on that. But I would appreciate when you see it, you go, ah, oh, I get it. David, I'm going to give you a little insight. Kevin is in a long distance relationship now with an interracial woman. Um, interracial woman. Wow. Interracial <laughs> woman. Very <laughs> Even when How you try that to be, even when you try to be PC, it comes off terrible. Interracial couple, <laughs> Lord. Interracial. They're an interracial Are couple. You right, interracial yeah. couple. For yeah. Lindsey Graham yeah. next, like what the hell? <laughs> I'd break your ankles. <laughs> no, um, so, so Nancy through... Kerrigan style. Ready. And, and so, I'm sure so, that yeah, works I'm... out to a certain degree because you don't have to come home to her. <laughs> it works out. <laughs> We, uh, we, we do, we do love each other, but you do look at some, I do look at some relationships every now and then. And just by the, just by, if you could read a book by its cover, you say to yourself, uh, well, I say to myself, uh, holy crap, you both definitely settled on each other. You know, like, uh, you, know, like <laughs> you become each other. I've been married 45 like, years. You like become they're the, each uh, other. You pick up each other's habits. Oh you, yeah. You, you, you start to guess what the other person's needs are. So you suppose those in advance. And, and you fulfill those needs. And that person is like, oh, oh, thank you for thinking about that. And, and conversely, so for me, my wife does that. Yeah, so, and but that's you know, the just... only way to get along with it. And then there's, I'm going to work now. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> See, you, you know how I could tell how Craig is married? For the amount of pillows that he has on his bed, no man would put that man of amount of pillows on their bed at night. Oh, geez. You just, just really it. screwed him up. He's got dogs. <laughs> oh, that's why. Yeah. The room is too neat, right? It's too neat. It's it too is. Neat. Yeah. There's, there's flowers <laughs> behind. You have, uh, you got a charcuterie board. On. No, no. I don't even know. What is that? No, that's, uh, so you got some, uh, some plants. Uh. You got, you got yeah. it all set. It's beautiful, by the way. Beautiful. I'm, I'm gonna beautiful I'm gonna bedroom. go green screen next time. Uh, Star Wars. I I, I, Look, I love I all the, the action cur- figures. Yeah. The dirty Never cur- do the green screen. We got it. We got. There is a. Uh, <laughs> listen. There there is a thing with people, and that, and I was I was happy that I didn't walk in on it because we have this thing. Whenever anybody uses the green screen, they suck, and <laughs> <laughs> I don't know sure why. <laughs> ever Tony can vouch for me on this one. Every time. <laughs> 
<laughs> ever tried and they do it successfully they're the one guy he's obviously not at a beach okay so i don't know who said to themselves oh yeah well a beach as an option was- <laughs> now, we suck without any tech we just suck straight across the board. We don't need yep. tech to suck. We, no, yeah, you guys don't need yeah, any, any tech like that. Craig, no, how men, about men kind of look at you, Craig. What's that, Tony? How about for you? What is your baby? Your your love? Your piece to piece to resistance? Well, yeah, for me, it's our first film, Evil Down the Street. You know that I um, um, I think for one also the family we we uh, based centered the film around. I knew in real life ever before being a filmmaker. So. You know, it has just a lot of connection for me. And, um, and and David and I, we actually, the first time we were physically met in real life was the day before we shot the film. Um, we did everything over the phone. A mutual friend introduced ourselves. Um, and David, how long was it before we actually got together on set? Was it a year? Just about a year. Uh, I live in Northern California. He lives in Southern California. And uh, we met over the phone. That <laughs> sounds terrible. Huh? We met over the phone. <laughs> and, uh, uh, we, we, we hit it off. We, we had the same work ethics, uh, a lot of the same standards and goals. And then he told me about this script he had. Uh, he sent it to me. And I, I thought that the basic script had a lot of good stuff in it. But whoever was working with him before had put all kinds of Hollywood crap in it. And uh, I, I just yeah. asked him, I said, you want me to, you know, make some adjustments here or give you some opinions on stuff? He said, yeah, sure. So I struck all that shit out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then gave it back. What do you, what do you classify as Hollywood shit though? Yeah, that's Anything a great that's question. Not re- yeah. In reality, wall crawling, for example, head spinning, okay. you know, th- 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 okay. that's just Hollywood stuff. You know, I'll tell you what, uh, it's much scarier to see something that you can actually relate to yeah. and, and say, oh, my God, that's happened to me. I or mean, all I, that I've Hollywood portal like that. did for, for Poltergeist. I mean, go figure, you know, that that shitty movie in general. <laughs> that, and and if you if you have those elements in a movie, somebody who somebody's going to say, oh, I've seen that before. Yes, you know, exactly. So, when That's when you're introducing done. yeah so and it's um i'm gonna check it out actually because it's it'd be more refreshing to watch a movie where you, you could say to yourself uh yeah that that is a possibility where right. it's you know somebody turn around their head come on that's been done what was that poltergeist right or no 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 exorcist first movie to do poltergeist. Poltergeist too. but but i gotta tell you Exorcist was an extremely well done movie at the time it was done. At the time, technically, right. the acting, the directing, sets, plot, all of it, it was extremely well done. And I was an adult when I saw it; scared the shit out of me. Same here. And I was like, "Whoa!" But since then, it's been so bastardized; it's now funny. Oh, when you right. look at it now, comparable to our current technical abilities, it's humorous. There's there's, there's parts of it that are humorous. You know, but a lot of it, a lot of it's been already uh, parody, parodied. Oh, absolutely! That yeah, countless so movies, countless yeah, so movies. Look at Jack Nicholson when he played the Wolfman. I don't know if you remember that film. That was the whole grisly oh. ass film. Yes. no doubt, straight out. Yeah, uh, but you know there was a sense of some kind of thrill behind it. It didn't do real well, uh, but nonetheless, I enjoyed Jack Nicholson. Period. Mm-hmm. So I'll watch his films, and sometimes I'm like, "Why did I watch that?" Well, it was Jack Nicholson. <laughs> I right? mean, if you had to have a peak movie for Nicholson during the, during his time, I would probably say The Shining with the Kubrick. Shining. I mean, you know, like yes. really good. nailed every 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 aspect, every pause, and every every piece of dialogue where yes. you're almost convinced at a certain time that he is speaking to a ghost, and there were no real jump scares. It was so subtle that you couldn't even call it a jump scare. Now, now every jump scare is so artificially set up. It's almost like a Nickelback song with the rhythm of the whole idea. Okay, it's like, no oh, turn movie. here. No <laughs> turn here. <laughs> okay, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and jump scares, uh, we're not into a lot of jump scares either, uh, but occasionally they do work. They do work sure. in the right circumstance. And conditions, if it catches you truly off guard, it will make you jump. 
you know, yeah. and, and that's what it's supposed to do. Every Western's like every other Western, but yet we continue to watch them. That's, you know, that? that's every a, war movie is exactly like the last war movie. That's a great point. I always thought to myself, why during the showdown, if you're the sheriff of the town, just break the clock. Okay, just break it one minute before. Oh yeah, two guys just standing there for like a solid five I mean, minutes. I don't know. I need to. Oh, I need to interrupt for a second. Hold Kevin. on now. I think we're I need to interrupt for one second, Kevin, because I, actually there's a contradiction in there. Have oh. you guys seen a bad war movie in comparison to a good war movie? Because there have been uh, such such and such, uh, where there has been a really bad war movie, and then some that are 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 so uh, horrific, so. Uh, beautifully portrayed. Well, uh, Pearl Harbor with Ben Affleck, that pretty much straight up sucked. It did. It yeah, did. he was he was terrible. Yeah, he was not good. Yeah, no, that yeah, yeah that was a really bad movie. That was just rough. Well, the best scene I liked about yeah. him is when he got the maximum shots and was bombed, and then broke his nose with that cork when it shot into his face. Uh, I thought that was funny. Yeah. I think at the beginning of the movie Pearl Harbor, and now this is just me, all right, they should explain at the beginning that Hawaii was not a part of the <coughs> United States yet. Just throwing it out there. Yeah. Because yeah. nine out of 10 territory. people, maybe 10 out of 10, will say to you every time, well, it's because they attacked us at Hawaii, that we were, uh, it's a state. And it's like, no, it wasn't a state. That's right. No, they, they attacked our naval base. They attacked that the was naval positioned base. in a territory called Hawaii. And, and that's what happened. You know, it's like it's like uh, uh, Korea. There was a film made, I believe it was in the uh, 50s or 60s. It was called Hamburger Hill. Yep. Okay. That was a bloody ass movie. Graphic. It was just, uh, it was, uh, uh, just death, 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 death. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why they called it Hamburger Hill. Uh, as uh, men they were- They ground uh, people up. Exactly. Their fodder. Yeah. Well, you yeah. know, young guys- fight wars for old guys who are too damn scared to go do it themselves. You know, yes. they, so th that's the way it is. You become cannon fodder for their bullshit. Right. You know, so, uh, well, absolutely. then the, the recruiting ideas is, is uh, it, it wouldn't, um, okay, so the recruiting material that's used um, isn't there to get millionaires to fight because they're not going to give you shares of a stock or anything like that. They're saying, hey, you want to not be homeless? Maybe, here you go. Well, Maybe. you're also getting yeah, to a whole lot of other social college. issues relative to keeping people stupid and not educating them. There's keeping another them great point. So they have no choices. But let's not go there because- I politics. know, we'll talk. <laughs> Trust <laughs> me. We'll save that for another time. <laughs> That's another <laughs> podcast, another time. Yeah, exactly. Tony, exactly. am I talking to myself here? What the fuck is going on here? <laughs> Now, of course, the number one rated uh, war movie of all time, Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. Of course, yeah, huge to blockbuster, take. lots of gore and violence and- you know, showing showing everything that, that that's happened um, yes. throughout the war. Tough uh, movie to incredible watch. movie. Yeah. Incredible movie. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, tough movie to watch. There's no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, now, I know you guys in particular, I'm going to start out, start out at the beginning, kind of, because you guys made uh, CRA, which is Creative Renegade Artists. Right. And uh, that happened uh, approximately like nine years ago, right? Right. And uh, how did you guys come across that? I, and I said, you, I, you know, uh, earlier you guys said that you were introduced by a friend and uh, just it, did the magic happen? Was it like, uh, well, that's, like, that's oh, not we should a bad, go out to yeah. dinner. Let, let me just correct something real quick for you. Craig created CRA Entertainment approximately nine years ago, but it was just CRA. Right. Okay. And then about uh, a few years back, one of our uh, junior partners in the, our company uh, came up with the idea of saying uh, creative renegade artists. Right. And we liked that because it uh, denoted that we are outside the circle. Uh, we run free. We don't care. Uh, and we're going to do what we're going to do. And if you look at our films, for example, The Crumbs, uh, the, the Crumbs got a lot of heat for a number of reasons. <laughs> when I was writing it and working on it, I, I put uh, some scenes in there. There's scenes about uh, homosexuality, uh, cannibalism, I mean, vampirism, just a friendly little family. 
Sparky well, actually made a poster of the daughter. crumbs. Pardon me? Uh, our our, our uh, brother, Sparky, over in the uh, the other square, he actually made a poster for the crumbs. So just oh, really? in case you guys want to use like another movie poster, Sparky has you covered with his version of what the crumbs movie poster I'd love to see could it. have been. I'd love to see uh, really? Just give him a minute, though. Give him a minute. <laughs> okay. He's got the big board. But he then, needs to expand it. And, and then we went over to make Demon Fighter, which is totally unlike the first two films. And we decided, let's take a film or a plot line and let's mix martial arts with this, you know, exorcism type of movie, right? All right? And let's make the exorcist a down and out martial artist who grew up in the streets, hard knocks, who does drugs. He fights demons in the street and the souls of men Well, he wrestles with his own. I love it. And it, it, it developed character and the character helped accentuate plot and theme and uh we're getting great reviews on the film because of that people are saying this is so original i've never seen anything like it and i'm not patting my own back you can trust that if, if you knew me you know i'm the last guy to do that uh, oh I, david that's a, that is that is the reason you're being a, the reason you're being complimented so much by people is because they're not used to a character actually being built correctly or a storyline being told <laughs> in the right originality. way. <laughs> or originality. Or a storyline being told in the right way to the point where they, this is what people are really used to. People are used to a lot of exposition and a lot of foreshadowing for them directly. Like, as you know, we're all blankety, 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 fill in the blank. And we're all here because of blankety, blankety, blank. And if they don't even get that, it's on the bottom of the screen for them, not in closed captioning, but like Cincinnati, Ohio. Like, uh, like the oh, yeah, like Cincinnati, Pennsylvania. Cool. Got it. I you know, was I trained it. to show it, not tell it. And exactly. uh, I the studied more... with a director named Michael Gordon, who did a bunch of 60s films with Rock Hudson and Doris Day. And he was really big on don't tell me, show me. So show me. when I yeah. write, I, I, I write to show something. I want the character to do something. For example, Father Michael in uh, Demon Fighter. <laughs> He doesn't say anything about his smoking of pot all the time. It's He just gets up and does it. It's discovered. And a, a person comes in and says, wow, do you, why do you smoke so much? And he looks at it and he says, so I can talk to people, people like you. Well, David, that's the thing. You you want the audience to want to pay attention so they can yes, learn and right, care about right, the right. next scene that's coming yes. up. So, you know, and audiences want that too. The only thing is, Big time studios don't even want to risk it. They don't, and that's not even much of a risk, honestly. They're not. They're not into storytelling. They're into money making. They're Correct. they're they're into producing product. They want to know. Let's see what hits. Spaghetti they want to know the if uh, Superman drinks Pepsi or if he drinks Coke. They want that's product right. placement on top of product placement. By the time you know it, the Avengers was just a commercial for other movies. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's sad so, because a lot because movies are fun to watch, especially, you know, like they just they've been going to bookstores for the longest time. Twilight, they've been turning Twilight into a whole series. They basically take Harry Potter. They said, hey, how did you come up? Remember the uh, there was <laughs> famous interview. Um, they asked uh, J.K. Rowling how she came up with the idea for Harry Potter. And they cut the feed after like a hot second because she was very honest. She said, I used to be homeless and huff glue and write about Harry Potter. And they're like, whoa, cut. <laughs> There's a there's you a can't point talk about huff and glue on TV. <laughs> Kids are gonna really want to do weird. that because they think they can. There's well, something really something weird because like, even on Netflix, where this person said, "Don't judge a book by its movie," and and I love that you know because yeah. movies bastardize the book usually. They're not true to it. Yeah, yeah. except for some, like The Godfather, for example. Okay, Godfather's it was pretty close to Mario Puzo's original story. And again, William Blake, William Beatty's uh, The Exorcist, pretty close to the story. Yeah. All right. Uh, I mean, I always, I always have that take that if your if your book was able to be turned into a movie, your book was too long, and uh -huh. it was able to be shortened up really quick. They got to the juice of the parts really easy, and um, you know, which which is fine because some books can be books and movies at the same time. Look what Mel Gibson did. He picked up a Bible one day and he's like, I wonder if I just took one chapter. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like okay ben i mean i really wouldn't but uh you know um, he's, he's made some strange choices but that one movie he did uh Peter? that was all in uh the Nawala language i uh, and uh apocalypto thank you apocalypto oh, apocaly apocalyptico okay. yeah. that was a pretty intense movie that yeah. followed exactly what to a degree what was happening at the time and they chased those poor guys all the way to the ocean. And then they were frozen because what was arriving? The Europeans. And that changed everything right yeah, at that point. It certainly did. So, yeah. uh, you know, there's movies that are made that aren't appreciated for what they are. And that's the filmmaker's chance. That's Gentlemen, the role we're gonna, of the we're gonna, dice, we're going to interrupt for just one second. Because just like that, we are going to change your lives forever. <laughs> you got a check for me? We are we're ready for that. Uh, for me? My, is my wife wife Sparky, Sparky is going to take 10 cents for every poster that he sell, sells from the Crumbs movie. And uh, of course, you guys get 90%. We'll just take a, a measly 10. Uh, Sparky, let's see what you got there, brother. <laughs> Actually, I figured out a movie poster to tie in two of their movies together. Oh. oh. I'm ready for this. All right, guys, you got a two for one special. He Drum normally roll. doesn't do this. Today. I, am <laughs> I am leaving Crumbs <laughs> to go see the <laughs> evil <laughs> down the street. <laughs> I love you, man. Right on. It goes from Crumbs. To oh, it's evil a hit. Down the it's a hit, Sparky. Look at that. And you know how you can tell, guys? You can tell that it's Sparky's house because it's written on the side of the roof right there. Sparky's <laughs> house. Just in case there was any question of whose house it was. Right on, Sparky. I love it. Oh, that's good, man. Perfect. Perfect. Love it. Once again, uh, oh. like magic. Now, guys, you can, you can make that a t shirt and check it out at merchbooth.com or go to the podguyspodcast.com. Check us out at Wise Radio and also expect that to be on there. That's what we're doing. Pay the rent around here, guys. So I find it funny, right? I find it funny that you guys made, and when did you guys make that movie uh, as far as the, uh, the Kung Fu? Uh, well, Kung we, we did that at the height of the pandemic right. in 2020. Uh, right during when they said there was a break for a moment, yeah. uh, we had already pre our pre production planning is pretty intense. Gotcha. So, when we yeah. show up to shoot a film, we're prepared. Everybody, crew, cast, everybody knows exactly what we're doing immediately that day, first thing off. Boom. Perfect. And we were just waiting. We got stalled. We got put back. We got put back. Yeah. And then they said, okay, uh, there's going to be a period of time and it'll be maybe two to three weeks. Boom, we were on it. Yeah, and we went to we went into the Fresno Visalia area. Yeah, yep. Craig. Yep. And uh, we had uh, location scouts down there already who set everything up for us. Uh, went down and started shooting the film. Uh, it, we had a a great time doing it. And then near the end of the film, I had this idea about this biracial couple who was stuck together during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. That's I a smart idea because if they're people. telling you you got to do stuff for the pandemic, especially in California, you're like, let's just make a movie of all the restrictions. Exactly and all the right. Quarantine Very smart exactly idea. Right. Opportunistic as hell right there. Very yeah. creative. So we Kudos, wrote the honestly. film, went home, put the production process, pre-production planning process together, got it all going on. And the very next year around Valentine's Day, we shot it. Yeah. Now, do you, do you guys personally go through a casting director, a casting company, no, uh, we do as the far casting. as finding the actors for your films? No, no we'll we post. We'll post Tony on the various acting sites, okay. and then all all of the taped auditions. David and I'll go through them. Um, but yeah, we go through casting sites. That's yeah, that'll eat into the budget if you're going through agencies all around. But you know what I like about the movie idea? You know what I really like about the movie idea? Everyone else was still making movies, right? about whatever they wanted to make it about. Right. You guys actually addressed reality of everybody's reality, what was going on. So that is that is really something to want to check out. Love and Quarantine, it's called, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. so when we did the premiere, we uh, 
best thing that I heard from a lot of people, aside from them laughing during the appropriate times, of course, uh, was after the movie. They're going, he's just like that. Right. No, I'm not. You are. You do that. Totally <laughs> relatable characters totally to, re relatable to real life. Yeah. yeah, people, as people are, silly as it was. You know, it's it's the it it's independent movies that really can capture the reality of of normal people people that are making 60 grand and under that's where the juice is right there and that's your movie audience right because anyone over that idea also curious as hell because they think to themselves i'm going through a little bit of a struggle i wonder exactly what the class underneath me is going through too because sure, you can see sure. like tv shows that were brought up even for years like friends for instance you got two guys sharing an apartment like that big in New York City. Give me a break. That's a studio setup, and the same same sets were reused and reused for years to the point where it kind of manipulated everyone's actual perception of reality on how a daily on how a normal people are living. So, so I, I really want to check that out. Is that on Amazon Prime? Can I find that on Amazon Prime? You can see yeah, it on Tubi on... TV for free. Yeah, TV and TV? you can see it on, Tubi on, TV on for... Amazon. Okay, what's that? Uh, Love and Quarantine. Where can yeah, you do? I would suggest Tubi TV along with uh, YouTube. But Tubi, it's 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 very user friendly. They have a lot of great movies on there, and you just download and you're ready to go. Just click, 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 and you're and you're there. But no, it, not it, not that it's a, a a money thing, but like, do you guys get a certain percentage of like every click? Or is nah, it we do this for likes. <laughs> and giggles, yeah. you know, stuff no, like I mean, that. I mean, I, I want to. Push like, not to say money as much as possible. <laughs> I'm just saying that, like, when they get the cut, is it like, is it like Absolutely. per click or is it per download or no, is it just like it's per uh, view? Oh, you get into you get into a certain uh, yeah. uh, minutes, uh, minutes, minutes, minutes played. I'm okay. guessing, yeah, okay. I'm guessing views and then the advertising is already baked in and then that's how they catch the exact, uh, right. the exact check that's coming out. Exactly. That's right. coming your way. And, um, you know, YouTube does something similar uh, to, right. to a degree. Spotify, you know, and that's, I was that's where the Spotify real content is. All like, those um, other guys too. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, we're, you know, we do, we get merchandising, you know, like, so, you know, hands are washed, money is made, but, you know, the content out there, people are getting better content for free today rather than, Paying for Disney Plus. No offense right. against Disney Plus. Your kids are going to want it. You're going to hate your kids for wanting it because you're going to want it. <laughs> I'm nothing but crap in the background right there. Mine are grown and gone. They pay for it on their own if they want it. Yeah. I mean, you know what the worst part about this technology is? It wasn't available 50 years ago because, right. holy Lord, how much better off? Who would be out of business? Who wouldn't be out of business? Sort oh, of true. thing. You know, it's just, well said. You yeah. got it. You know, you got like a million ways. You can't have, remember, I still remember, geez, seeing commercials for you. Want to learn how to do this? Buy our 15 book set. What the fuck are you talking about? 15 book set. <laughs> you know? And then they move that up to just like watch DVDs and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and send them for like $238. Now people are so integrated with each other and in, uh, people are so together to the point where you just, people want to make a how you do something YouTube video just for whatever, just for likes. And that was before YouTube was even monetizing people. Right. Yeah. So true. Now we've, we've talked to, uh, we've talked to many actors, actresses, uh, directors, writers. We've had them all on the show. Um, for you guys, for being uh, SAG after, uh, after uh, um, actors, directors, film writers, do you guys like in particular sticking with SAG actors as well? Or do you go uh, out of uh, SAG as well uh, in order to find uh, all of your talent? We go with who's good. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. yeah. No, Regardless me, of me if they are. Or we get auditions from uh, amateurs. And yeah. if the audition is good, we will call yeah. them back. And we will now give them our script their sides that we want them to study get back to us and then after they've done that if they did a good job then i will change everything keep the same sides but i'll change everything and i'll ask them to do it again for me sure. and when they come back with it if they've accomplished what i've asked i know i can work with them and i'll hire them and that craig and i feel strong about that because everybody needs a first chance Right. This is a totally bizarre industry where everybody's kissing up to each other and doing I don't know what 
with each other. That was going to be my next question job. going into it. You, you, <laughs> ask Harry, Harry no, no, no. We don't, we don't do prison love stories. No, <laughs> no, no. It's, it's, um, no, you're, you're totally right though, David, there is, there's so many politics involved, especially when it comes to just about every form of entertainment. And, and it's really, it's really, uh, it feels as stupid as it sounds when you say, well, he only got stage time because of X, Y, Z. And then you, you sound spiteful over that, even though, you know, I do stand up comedy, I do acting and I, you know, doing podcasting and all that. But it sounds it, it always comes off from the person complaining as spiteful when in the reality you're just sharing, you know, just, just sharing a little bit of uh, the anger uh, from from worse people. Well, but I like the I like the approach of non favoritism because people like to say that. There's a lot of different things out there. Some people say that there's capitalism. Some people say that there's socialism. I say that only one, only one thing truly exists, and that's favoritism, and that needs to get the hell out of there. Yeah, don't do that. Not just uh, entertainment. Yeah, yeah. Just, that just like this. our show, just like our show, how Sparky uh, tends to get all of the fame and fortune from our show, you know, and, you know, I want some spotlight as well, but <laughs> I can't compare. I can't compare sometimes. Do you hear me complain? No. Well, you, you, know, you, just don't, you just don't have the same spark, man. True. Oh. It is true. Uh, we, oh. we have an okay. We have a, we have a very, we have a very great dynamic. Tony steers the ship. Sparky draws the pictures. I go on about bullshit half the time. And you know, it's a, uh, it's a, good, it's, a good it's a, it's a really good dynamic. If we've, we've actually watched other podcasts and sometimes they're also good. But then sometimes you really can tell the difference if you go side by side comparison and you, you know, like not meant, not, not to mention any, any names, obviously, but, uh, but we're, we're always trying to improve every week, you know, because you have to, why, right. I, I, I would never want to just continuously get bored. I tried writing a joke today and it was, it was basic. It was the premise of it was this, that I can't believe it took the media this long to ask Kanye West. Hey Kanye, what do you think about the Jews? <laughs> you know, you know, just like it took you that long, guys? Really? Really? And then he's sitting there, he's like, you know what I'll say? It's like, all right, man. You know, like that as a Jewish representative, I <laughs> I endorse oh. your joke, by the way, Kevin. <laughs> it's kind of funny, right? It's kind of funny where it's just like that long. This guy could have been obsolete how long ago? <laughs> or will. How was it to slap <laughs> so and so during the audience? Oh, I mean, how about that? Right, that was With, so uh, outrageous, uh, Chris for me. Rock. Yeah, that's the only that's yeah. the only way you get out of um. Like Will Smith could have still done gold bond powder commercials, you know, for one who needs your hands. You know? <laughs> what did yeah. the hand that was a face? Slap. That was that was that that was one that was one action that that made. Now uh, uh, that that made everybody forget about Ukraine. <laughs> That's how, that's how big it was. <laughs> They're like, was hey, everybody's still dying in Ukraine. It's like, I know, I know, I know. But Will Smith just slapped somebody. And then the conspiracy theorists pop out. They're like, that's what they want. It's like, I don't think they want this. Yeah. Well, I think we're going to watch it anyway. on the spot. And he should have been, been It was assault. It was literally right. assault. It was a battery was straight up. up. He should have he been arrested on the spot yeah. and, and make it Chris Rock's right to uh, charge him. And guess what? If there was a police officer who viewed it, they didn't need Chris Rock to give him permission. He Correct. Saw you're you're 100 percent right. In action. Yeah. So for him to get away with it like that, with a hand, you know, spanking, and no, you can't come back for 10 years. Now go home and study. I mean, I'm like, what? What the yeah. hell is that? Yeah. You know, I, I mean, he got slightly got more. He got, and I, I hate the word canceled because you know what? In this society right now, everybody's temperamental. Everybody's on edge. They're like, oh, maybe we should write nasty letters. Maybe we should confront somebody. Maybe we should call. Some... Oh, really? Really? Yeah, yeah it's really it's a bit ridiculous. Just turn the channel. Sometimes. Don't watch them. Don't yeah. watch it. Just you, don't if, watch it. If you don't like that, it was, I think it was more of a Demi Moore joke than it was a, than it was a, a G.I. Jane of course. joke. Yeah. Demi, Moore, Demi Moore, think about it like this. Demi Moore also cheated on her husband with a younger man. So... <laughs> I mean, yeah. maybe it was a little no. deep ended there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. possibly. <laughs> um, yeah. But no, I, I just, I would listen. That could have gotten much more. That could have gotten much worse for Will Smith if Chris Rock felt the need when he turned his back 
if Chris Rock felt the need to run towards him, push him over, and then landed on some tables, that That's would have right. been a retaliation right there. So or, what are you really supposed to do in that situation? Or, or a good right cross. Or a good right cross. Down. I mean, the, the high differential. That's another thing. You're slapping the weakest guy in the room. Who are you trying to impress? That's a terrible mm. thing to do right He was trying to impress his, his wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. By being and, a chivalrous, a chivalrous, a chivalrous. gentleman. Yeah. And then you start know yelling from the audience. Yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. bad. It's just bad. That was bad from start to finish. It was yeah. horrible. So but you know what, gentlemen? Speaking ass. of change, speaking of change, and of course, you know, not to start from, from beginning to middle to end, but we need to do that at some point in time. Do you guys have anything on the horizon as far as that you can share with us that you may have right around the corner? We have a few different scripts that we're entertaining. Right. Uh, uh, one of them is just out of reach. That sounds like lawyer course. talk there, David. <laughs> uh, it's, it's pretty much what it is. Uh, uh, we have a, a piece called Preacher that we really like, but it's expensive to do. So we're, we're shelving it for just a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, we have another yeah. piece called Captives that is a, about the Vietnam War. And mm -hmm. we really like that one. That we might cheat in my backyard. Towards. Go ahead, Craig. No, I was just kidding. I said that we're talking about shooting, <laughs> He's shooting that one in my backyard. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> you guys I'm, have uh, not only the A, B, C, D, E, and F budget, <laughs> <laughs> but that one starts at Z. <laughs> you, you give us a camera, we'll give you a movie. You know, <laughs> especially with all the devices with great lenses in them now, right? Like every. You had to go out of your way to take out a loan to get a, a, a nice size lens and a Canon camera and everything, everything ready back. And this is going back about 22, 23 years ago, just to get everything perfectly right, uh, get uh, tripods, had people sign up on release forms and all that nice stuff. And now you could literally do it all from a phone or an iPad. Well, so it agree. speeds up. Absolutely right. Yeah, so it speeds up the pro it's, so it speeds up the process of when you have the availability to do so. So you can feel confident enough to take on more scripts, knowing that you can get it done faster. Especially, and I have to I have to put this out there, especially if you have the experience and you guys have the experience to already know. Like, wait a second, you know, especially when you're you're you've probably been working with the technology right now, probably eight to ten years, I'm guessing. So you guys got eight to 10 years of technology of all the things that the kids know, but you also have how to shoot the scene in the fastest, most efficient way while still telling a brilliant, a brilliantly written story all around, well, which is, well, you know. Well, let me tell you the truth. We have some great crew yeah. who are younger than us, very talented, who do exactly that. We shoot with multiple cameras mm -hmm. constantly mm -hmm. uh, so that we get multiple angles and et cetera immediately on the first one we don't like to waste time and we don't want to burn out the actors all right let's set for this now let's set for and it's the same sh scene for seven hours yeah and there that's killer to do to the actors I, I as an actor and craig as well we respect the hell out of actors but at the same time they're not the important part of the film they're one aspect of the film our crew is an incredibly important part, and they're one aspect. The caterers, extremely important. Yeah. Look, somebody's got to eat. Somebody's got to eat. eat. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah. We, you ever? Uh... All right, guys. For makers, lunch today, we got Dunkin' Donuts, and for dinner, we got Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> we we cut up some bologna don't sandwiches. Don't <laughs> we got Dunkin' Donuts. If you're seeing a theme here, and you feel like bringing a sandwich from home, <laughs> when we when we shot the crumbs, we rented a compound with a of a huge stone cabin over 100 plus years and all smaller cabins on it. We housed everybody there. It was shot nice. in Placerville, Hangtown up in uh, the Sierra. And uh, we had people there 24 seven. So what we did was we hired caterers that would show up early in the morning, breakfast, lunch, dinner, uh, and w meals, not just a bunch. Of, and that's not talking uh, uh, about just all the snacks that we provide and uh, everything else with it. Uh, we're really big. Uh, we don't ask anybody to work for free as indie filmmakers. It, it, it's important to respect people's time and energy. 
everybody gets paid no matter what weekly and uh, it's been a successful formula for us we don't beg a film we don't ask anybody oh you're going to get imdb credit and and we're going to feed you and, and you're going to have such a good time yeah I, i'm not into that yeah. if, if if i think you're good enough to be in the film or to work with us then by golly you should be paid fed transported and housed yeah, yeah, you're you're gonna. I always like this one. Uh, yeah, I've heard it before, right? And you've probably heard it before the same. You'll be paid an exposure. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, does that exposure come with a blowjob? No? no. All right, all right. Well, then I'm out, buddy. Uh, you know, you had it's me up here with like a unicorn. Like I was on like a, like a greasy pond. Back to Harvey episode. Weinstein. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't come to an agreement there on exactly what the word free meant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, oh, that poor guy. He's uh, getting everything he deserves right now. Yes, he is. On, on trial again for uh, being a nasty guy. Yeah. Who's that? Deservedly so. Harvey yeah. Weinstein. Oh, yeah. Weinstein, He's yeah. In, in Los yeah. Angeles right now for uh, another four people. So whatever he, if he can, finish his sentence over on the first one, then they will ship his ass over to, immediately to California to start that sentence for that one. And he's going to be found guilty, Garrett Balbarans. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, like, um, uh, you, you want the... You want the best people up there. You don't want to have to give a massage to a, a, a grizzly looking sloth guy like that. You know, just like you just you just don't you shouldn't you shouldn't find your actresses that way. But, you know, like, OK, so, for example, Meghan Markle was in the news. She was complaining that she felt like she was a bimbo while on the on the show Deal or No Deal. Right. And, um, you know, she said, oh, well, well, she said, I felt like I was just a bimbo. And we're the women, if you remember the show, guys, you just hold a case, you look hot, you smile, you open the briefcase when they say the number, okay? Not a lot to it. So I'm thinking to myself, so you gave the money back then, right? Then you gave the money back to the next actress? <laughs> <laughs> the next one in line, right? You, you felt so terrible. Uh, bimbo well, number two, come on down. But, yeah. yeah, exactly. It's so... My point is that it's just um, it's so easy to complain after the fact of how you were feeling. And I'm sure she did feel that way or whatever the hell. But in reality, you took that job Thank off you. of somebody she didn't else. Have to do it. That's right. She didn't have to do it. Exactly. She took that job from somebody who wanted to do it, probably more, who would never write a book. Maybe they would write a book called And Then I Felt Like a Bimbo or whatever the hell. But she's married to Prince Harry right now, is deemed to have the number one podcast. And eventually you're going to say something like that, that it doesn't really anger me. It just... It, it's just like, well, it's self it's, and you're the deal or no deal up. girl. It's like being Vanna White being like, you know, I didn't feel like this was really using me up to my ability. <laughs> turning letters for 40 years. It's like, dude, you're turning letters. What did you want to be? One of the contestants for a night? And then they turn the, it, I, I don't know. I just. No, See, I, I, wanna, I, I want to address I something, especially in this hate culture uh, that we have. And, and unfortunately, I, I think it needs to be addressed, especially from a director, writer, uh, owner standpoint. How do you guys feel about Rotten Tomatoes, IMDb ratings, um, all of these individual like sites that happen to do, you know, percentage scores on movies? Would you just encourage somebody just to see the movie and, and not be like, look, there's this pretentious uh you know uh, uh uh screen uh screen viewers that happen to go through a hundred movies a week at least wow. and uh they get fed these movies and they're like oh well uh you know grease the palm of whatever particular movie uh that needs to get greased through the percentage line and then we'll 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 work on these other movies mm -hmm. but i've i've heard different stories how do you guys feel about that particular, uh, those particular uh, sites in general? Well, for myself, I didn't even know IMDb existed. Uh, when I found out, I was like, what? What the hell is that? And then uh, realizing it's just controlled by who? Oh, okay, I get it. Oh, yeah. I don't pay attention to any of that. I don't even look at mine. I think I have once. Uh, that's after I found out it existed. I'm like, what? I, I, I've never paid attention to that stuff because uh, I don't chase my ego. Sure. Uh, I'm not into my self-aggrandization, you know, aggrandizement. Uh, that's not me. 
That's why for me, you like the film, you don't like the film, that's all right. Did you see yeah. it? That's all that counts. You know, I didn't, I grew up watching movies prolifically and not all of them did I like, but guess what? They got my money. Now, when you were, when, now David, when you were, uh, when you were younger, did you ever ask the question if somebody didn't like something like, well, why? And then you want the input and then you want no, to know why. No, because why. art is subjective. And, and people, scat. yeah, people have different opinions about different things. I always just say, oh, okay, well, that, that, that's interesting. And I leave it alone. Uh, be careful what you ask for. You know, yeah, because uh, if you if they ask for too much, you turn out with them. You, it turns into the movie. Look who's talking, and you're like, "What the fuck? Who asked for this? Why? Why is John Travolta here? And there's talking babies." <laughs> yeah, you just set yourself up, and 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 you're only looking for compliments anyway. And uh, that's me is so false. Uh, I can't handle that. Uh, so I don't do that. Craig doesn't. I'm either. actually looking up your IMDb right now, by the way. He's David. doing it. He's, <laughs> he's doing it. He's, Tony's going in. I'm like, I'm looking at Fortune Dane, True Believer, uh, Universal something, whatever the Universal Gentrification, uh, Franken, Franken Suticles. Yeah, I only did that as a favor. Trust me, that was a nightmare <laughs> working on it. Uh, the director didn't have a clue what he was doing and I was working as an actor. So I sat there in the scene and I said, Hey, you know, uh, maybe you want to bring the camera over this way, you know, uh, and, uh, <laughs> it's uh, nice have when you have the about director, director. <laughs> I, I stay in my lane when I'm an yeah. actor, I'm an actor. Yeah. When I'm a director, I'm a director. Uh, and as long as the director's happy with, with whatever the hell it is, then I'm happy. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't do that. Uh, it just doesn't work that way for me. You always said you could tell a Woody Allen film by everybody talking like Woody Allen. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. And it and once you hear that, it ruins all Woody Allen movies where you're like, oh yeah, he's just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> That's a whole nother topic, Woody Allen. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Sparky does have something on the big board there, Tony. If you <laughs> wanted to take yourself out of the IMDb and set him up for something nice right there. No, Sparky. I'm looking through Craig's IMDb right now. Stop it. I thought, oh, I thought oh, you were saying, you I thought you were starting up with Craig's list right there. Like yeah. I'm on Craig's list. Craig's list of IMDb. achievements we made. Actually, to say. Uh, Boy, Craig, like you have them. quite the prolific IMDb uh you know. Oh, thanks, Tony. List. So Anyways, Sparky, what do you have, sir? Is it loving quarantine? No, 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 no. What happened is I was actually re recently put on the Rotten Tomato board, actually. Oh, oh no. God, isn't that oh. terrible? It's the worst. Yeah, I know. That just sounds like the absolute worst. Were you at a percentage, Sparky? Well, Look at this. This is what the percentage was. The big board Rotten Tomato score. Oh, crap. Oh, oh, oh crap. crap. <laughs> Yeah, look at that you could you can see i could uh, the people that are not having the video right now feed and for that for all of our audio listeners oh. out there um there are two stick figures apparently hurling tomatoes at what assumes to be sparky holding a giant mug is that a giant i thought mug they were just something? giant zeros no they are rotten tomatoes <laughs> oh they're throwing <laughs> that's the big board that is your big board oh they're throwing they're tomatoes throwing, at they're your throwing tomatoes board. at the big board that's how Rotten Tomatoes used to work. Am I right, Sparky? Is that that was the yeah. first? That was before the internet was invented, right? That is yeah. very true. <laughs> of course, I, I, it's always refreshing not to hear a conspiracy theorist on the other end. I always say, uh, when the internet was invented, they're like, "Oh no, no, they had the internet since the 1800s." It's like, all right, man, you know, just fuck off with all that. All right, like I don't know, and you don't know that shit either. You know. Just, <laughs> well, the internet was used for the defense department at the at the very original at the originality. I mean, sure, you know, like all of that too. I mean, nineteen seventies. <laughs> I can't put a year on it. You know, they didn't use it for stuff that we use it for. Maybe they did. I don't know, man. I don't know. There was just an article where a guy visited uh, Mars uh, from the future, and uh, yeah, said that. <laughs> we've Listen, been there. I, for had, I have of a years. lot of questions in school that were never answered either. I raised my hand the one time and it was, uh, I said, well, how do we know what Jupiter looks like in color if we can't actually see it? And, uh, and the teacher said, that's a great question. And then continued on with the lesson. I'm like, all right, well, and do you have the answer? 
you know she doesn't <laughs> no 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 she, she didn't. welcome she did to the public education system Fantastic. no that was private that was actually a private school uh, down in uh, down in baltimore they even uh, better they, they got paid just about religion class <laughs> and then right after was science so when we would take the pop quizzes for science everyone would put down god until they fucking changed that shit around and then you didn't know what that was <laughs> your kids what do we know we're just like we, we just you know did the shortcut answer that's funny uh would you guys like to uh we're, we're gonna wrap up our show you know in great fashion of course we roll out the red carpet to you guys uh would you like to plug anything would you like to people to watch uh, anything in particular and where can they watch it and where can they get a hold of you guys? Sure. Well, the films again, uh, Demon Fighter, Evil Down the Street, The Crumbs, Love and Quarantine, uh, 2B TV, uh, certainly YouTube, Indie Rights channel, but we also appear on other channels on YouTube. Um, there's Prime, also Freebie, which is formerly IMDB TV. Um, that old so thing, look, that old IMDb uh, thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah we're, meanwhile, back to that. And um, for David and me, it's real simple that, you know, our, our names, uh, that's what we have on Facebook. We're accessible. Um, and same for CRA Entertainment, Facebook. Facebook, we're, uh, um, that's probably the most vibrant platform for us, really. Yeah, and, you know, if you see one of our movies and you like it, please tell everybody. If you don't like it, pretend you never saw it. <laughs> but watch it anyway Simple. <laughs> yeah you're you're totally right on that david people like to broadcast what they hate more than what they love and oh exactly. amen kevin amen yeah, it's just too much yeah. negativity all around yeah there you go there you go you notice i haven't brought up tapioca <laughs> <laughs> time for the old folks home everyone out let's wrap it up folks <laughs> nurse Nurse, <laughs> nurse, nurse. My I need a change. Please. I need a change, nurse. I'd love to hear just one of these times somebody open up a door in one of these boxes and scream like, "How did you get in my house?" And somebody in the square get up and get the, <laughs> kick the camera with them and shit. Grab the lights! Grab the lights! <laughs> like I heard it was tough in Everybody California out. right now, but holy shit! <laughs> Everybody, well, thank out. you so much. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> well, thank, thank you, guys you so much for inviting us. us. I enjoyed it. Yeah, you guys are fun. an absolute delight. Uh, you know, if you wanted to get in touch with you guys, get in touch with you on Facebook. Sparky, Please. if you were going to get in touch with us, how would you do it, sir? You can get a hold of us on every single major streaming service, including Google, iHeart, Radio, uh, Spotify, Spreaker, Deezer, okay. Castbox, Pocket okay. Cast, I, iTunes. iTunes, iTunes, yeah. Uh, uh, I tried. Uh, uh, Gio, something about Gio Rio. <laughs> almost sticking a landing on, on this one. Almost, almost. You can find us on Facebook Live Video, and uh, there's something I'm missing. Radio. It's like, it's like watching. It's like watching yeah, Nancy yeah, Kerrigan yeah, out of shape. Yeah, you know, you're like, don't forget about Wise Radio. He's the most important one. <laughs> Wise Radio. You can find Wise us on Radio. Wise Radio, and if you have any comments, complaints at all you can find us at the pod guys podcast at gmail.com oh now you bring the paper into it i know I, you I had know. a whole big board there oh jesus read off of craig david thank you guys very much oh, for thank taking you, the time out thanks, we thanks, appreciate Sparky. it uh you guys are amazing of course uh if you need any uh platform to uh pr to, to throw movies on of course we're going to throw it on our facebook as well great for them to watch your movies as well. Uh, we you. will be sending over headshots and script and scripts uh, and, and <laughs> all that other stuff. Uh, we have it all, all developing in our head as well, me and Kevin. Uh, Sparky is definitely gonna draw it, uh, but we will act it accordingly. Thank you, Sparky. <laughs> thank you guys very much. And thank you to your audience. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. it yes, so much. Thank you. Uh, Kevin, you do have a show coming up soon. I do. November uh, November nineteenth, we'll be in the we'll be packing up Club Seventy Nine on Blackman Street, Wilkesbury. Uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a blast, man. It's going to be a blast. I got to pull. Uh, I'll be there pulling up a good 30, 35 minutes. I might go longer if if possible. Uh, uh, Fifteen dollars gets you in. Uh, five dollars a drink. A uh, plate of food will cost you an extra five dollars on top of that. If you want some food, it will be catered. And, and uh, you know, yeah, we got yeah. It's going to be a great time though. You know, like I, 
Um, so we're going to be there and then I get some more upcoming crap from that. But let's go one at a time on this one. See how everybody. Fair you know, enough. It, Fair the, enough. The way, the way in the world. You know. Good night. I'm, I'm Good night, Tony guys. Kaz. Kevin Neary. And Leigh Picasso Sparky. Guys, have a great night. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you.